Now we got First Peter. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to show you these, these generic things. So, 1 Peter 3 talks about Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared. Now, this is a long history of controversy of interpretation of this passage. Who are the spirits in prison? Where are they? Etc. Now, obviously, most of us here might even have some different interpretations, but the basic context is these spirits were there in the days of Noah, right? Because that's what it clearly says. So it's not anyone in the days of the New Testament or anything. And they were disobedient in the days of Noah. Well, who were the spirits, spirit beings, who were disobedient in the days of Noah? Well, those were the watchers, right? Those were the ones who fell, who, who had sex with human women and all that. Um, let's take a look at First Enoch. It reads, the place, Sheol, is the prison house for the stars or angels and the powers of heaven, the spirits of the angels, which have united themselves with women until the great day of judgment. So this notion is that, you know, the notion I would present here is that, and this, this, there are different traditions of interpreting 1 Peter, but there is a legitimate, strong, very strong Orthodox Christian interpretation that Christ died on the cross, he went down into Sheol when he was, d during the three days, his spirit went down in Sheol, and he proclaimed his victory or triumph or whatever you might believe, he proclaimed that victory to those imprisoned spirits. Why? Because they were the original. They were like the mafiosa dons, the original ones who, who led the rebellion. They got imprisoned, but there's, of course, there's still more out here, right? And, but by going on in Sheol, he proclaims to that original defilers, the original rebellion, his triumph over all the principalities and the, over all the angels, right? And then he ascends into heaven, uh, you know, Peter talks about that later on. He says he ascends into heaven with all the power and all that. Well, guess what? In Enoch uh, 17 through 22, it talks about Enoch having a journey to Sheol and also a journey up to heaven. So some, some scholars even suggest that there's a typological connection going on that Christ's journey to Sheol in heaven reflects the type of Enoch's journey to Sheol in heaven, which is another confirmation of the connection to Enoch, right? Now, First Peter's content, not just that section, but the whole book, follows content and motifs that, that one scholar suggests, Charles, that R.H. Charles, that it follows Enoch 108, chapter 108, with precision. Let me just bowl you over with a bunch of these. Both these books talk about those who do evil, talks about a perishable seed, talks about spirits in prison, talks about Noah's sons being saved, right? Both 1 Peter and 1 Enoch 108. It talks, they both talk about prophets, books, and angels. They talk about the love of Christ or the love of God. They both talk about the disdain for silver and gold. They do not desire solid food. They both talk about the flesh that passes. They both talk about spirits or faith being tested. They both talk about being found pure and praiseworthy and end with a bless and a blessing. Oh, but we're not done. And all, they both also talk about reproach and insult and abuse, blessing by contrast. They both are, talk about being summoned from darkness to light and an exaltation and righteous judgment. So they follow this throughout the whole text. The themes, the memes, the, you know, the, 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 the uh, allusions are very loud and clear, very strong. 